Hey, another rookie tutorial. This one was requested by some of the viewers, um, and it is a skirmish tutorial. Um, now, <clears throat> you will see that that I have some skeptical attitudes towards skirmishing, um, and that may not be fair. Um, I am not myself a skirmish player, basically. I, I, I like other parts of the game than the skirmishing, and I don't think that skirmish armies do particularly well at tournaments, and I am very focused on tournament play for bull dashing. <clears throat> that said, skirmish, skirmishing and skirmish armies are very, very thematic and very very the second world war basically that's what most of the fighting that was done was it was skirmishing um so in that regard i think there are some useful both useful skills and useful lessons that we can take from this tutorial so let's go and see so basically what i'm talking about here is skirmishing infantry I'll get back to other types of units that, that can do this um, at the end. So who can really do this? Well, if we're looking at nations, we're looking at um, the Finns are probably the best skirmish army, with the US as being maybe the, the best as well. Those two are definitely at the top. The Brits can do it as well. They have some pretty good units for it. Um, and they have some special rules that can really benefit skirmishing. So you can get you can get uh, chindits for the British, and you can take regular infantry dudes, and you can take rifle drills uh, so that you get extra rifle shots. That benefits skirmishing. Um, however, the American move in fire and the Finnish uh, move and go on ambush with the bonus to to some units on uh, from firing from ambush. All of that is really beneficial to skirmish units. The Germans and the Soviets and the minor nations can do this to a lesser degree. Um, and some of them are actually forced to do it, even though they might not be that good at it. So especially minor nations, you, you typically are limited in your selection of infantry. And that means you're going to have to take skirmish infantry. You're going to have to take regular skirmish infantry because you haven't got anything else. Um, so, so sometimes you just have to do it. Um, the Germans, as always, are a little bit expensive when it comes to skirmishing, but can do some really nice combos. The assault rifles, because they have that 18-inch range, are actually pretty good for skirmishing, but they're very, very expensive for what they do. So, um, always, always with the Germans, you're paying way too many points for some capabilities that you get for free in the other armies. So how do you build skirmish units? Um, well, basically, you build them with rifles. Maybe BARs, maybe assault rifles for Germans. Um, BARs are beneficial to Americans. Um, and uh, if you're building American skirmishes, you should basically always take BARs. Um, for other nations that can take BARs, maybe. Um, I'm not sure it's worth it. But for Americans, yes, definitely. Um, the BIRs will give you extra range uh, and a couple of extra shots. Not that it matters much, it's the range that really matters because skirmish uh, units want to stay at a good range and deliver pins and casualties to their targets. They don't want to be in range of an assault, they don't want to be in range of a push with uh, SMGs. All of that, not good for the skirmish units. They want to be out where they can outrange the opponent. Um, sometimes I might give my units a single Panzerfaust. Um, I don't think any other uh, equipment is beneficial. I know some people like to buy LMGs for the, their skirmishes. That is a trap. It's a point trap. You're not getting your points worth. You can buy other stuff that is way more beneficial to you, um, including just extra bodies in your units. For me, a good skirmish unit is six to seven men. Um, 
a thing that has happened recently in the the international meta is uh, people are moving to to odd number units, uh, so seven man units, um, because that means that you're going to have to lose four men before you take a test um, instead of just three if you had a six man unit. Um, so so that might be an idea, but it's a little bit more expensive, of course. Um, regulars actually do this well and well enough. Um, you don't need your skirmishers to be veterans, or, although, of course, veterans are more survivable, uh, and you can sometimes get away with having five-man skirmish units of veterans. Um, but you don't want inexperienced skirmishers. Why? Because they get that minus one to hit, and you're already moving every turn. So that's minus two to shoot every single turn. You're not going to hit anything. Um, so you want you want them to be regulars, and you preferably want them to have some sort of shooting bonus. So American move and fire, or finish shoot from ambush. Um, that all works out to your own benefit if you have that. And and then regulars are just they're the cheapest you can get, where you get the benefits of all those rules basically. So the special rules that I look out for are move and fire, rapid fire, master of the hunt. They are the three special rules that really make skirmishers work well, cut above just regular dudes with riflemen. Um, that, that's what pushes a real skirmish unit for me. So where do they deploy and where do they operate? Well, they should always be in some sort of cover. You should always have at least a linear obstacle or soft cover, something so that you have cover. You should never be in the open. Being in the open is not for infantry, basically. Um, so, and you need a fair amount of line of sight. You need 12 to 24 inches because your rifles are, that's the beneficial range, 12 to 24. You don't want to be inside 20, uh, 12 uh, inches because then you can get charged or you can get SMG'd. Um, but you want that, that range where your rifles have the, the, the advantage. Um, so my preference is actually to have my skirmishes in area terrain because that will always give me cover. And then shooting out of that area terrain into the open. Um, delivering the pins and and uh, and the casualties. I often deploy my skirmishes near objectives or near a series of covers where I can move from one cover to the next, um, preferably with six inches between them, so that I don't have to run at any point, but I can shoot every single turn. And and I think skirmishes should stay on your own table half unless you really push the enemy down to the very last dregs then of course you can push up with skirmishes but skirmishes are not something that goes into the enemy's half and conquers territory no they're not units that go and and take objectives in the enemy's deployment zone they should stay on your own half where you always have that beneficial range down to the back lines of the enemy um, and where you can now always move back. So my preference is actually not staying in my own deployment zone, but pushing right out of my own deployment zone and staying between six and and twelve, um, no, so six and and eight, ten inches from my own deployment zone. I always want to be able to move back towards my own deployment zone. Tactics and targets, right. The first one that I see used, and these are all tactics that I see used and have used myself. Um, the first one is the double trouble tactics. Um, and that is where you run your skirmishes in teams of two units so that you can deliver two pins to a target. Because typically what you want to target is assaulters or uh, veterans or something that's, that's dangerous, right? Um, and one pin is typically not enough to stop them. Um, veterans will just shrug off one pin and move on and shoot you. And because they, they shrug off that one pin, then they haven't even got a minus one. So you want two units, so you deliver two pins per turn. Um, even if they make the auto test, they'll still have one pin left and they'll typically not hit you then. So double trouble is something I see done again and again. Like move them up in tandem, just 
have them close to each other so they have overlapping fields of fire. Um, you also, I also see them thought of as pin machines. You have six turns, that means you can deliver six pins with each skirmish unit. And, and you shouldn't really expect them to do more than that. Um, so I'm quite happy to have my skirmishers sit across from an open top vehicle of the enemy and just shoot at him for six turns. Deliver one pin each turn. That's, that's perfectly fine, as long as that means that that unit that I'm shooting at doesn't do some anything for the whole game, or at least for most of the game. Um, so, so think of them as pin machines that, that deliver pins to the enemy. Also consider that, that you might sometimes be able to force an enemy to go down. When you do that, don't be sad about it. You might not give them pins, you might not even give them casualties, but the enemy is now wasting a single turn. So if the enemy goes down to your pins, your, your skirmishes who are just there to deliver pins, that is a win for you. That's one whole turn where he's not doing anything with that very important veteran unit. Um, so, so that is really beneficial. And I also think that you should more often than not consider going on ambush with your skirmishes. Because going on ambush will mean that, that if the enemy has an outflank coming in, or if they have push units coming towards you, you will at least be able to shoot them. You'll be able to deliver pins. You'll be able to maybe give that flamethrower, when it gets out the, the jeep, maybe get it uh, a single pin. You might not kill it, but at least you'll give it a pin he might miss. Um, so go on ambush. This is where ambush is really useful order. Um, that is for skirmishes. Skirmishes really like going on ambush. And you know what? You don't even need to shoot from that ambush. You can just sit there on ambush and be a threat. Um, that will be enough to force the enemy to do something that he doesn't want to do. And you can also go down. If something really threatening that you can't really hurt and it, you can't stop it and it, it moves up to you, um, like a unit of Soviet engineers in body armor with SMGs and flamethrower, if that gets to you, you're screwed no matter what you do. You can go down. You can always go down. Um, you don't have to stand up and, and shoot. You, you can just go down. He might miss. Um, the final thing that I see used again and again is the turn six rush. So, and I'll use this myself if I'm using skirmishes. I want my skirmishes to be within 12 inches of the objectives when the game is ending. So that in turn six, I can just run them towards the objective and hope they survive. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll take five turns instead as a pin machine and then run to the objective um, or run into the enemy's deployment zone or run into his sector or what is depending on what mission you're playing, right? So, so quite often the mission will inform exactly where my skirmishes will deploy and where they will move during the game so that I'm making sure that by turn five I'm ready for that turn six rush. So those are the tactics. Double trouble, pin machine, force down, ambush the push, and turn six rush. Those are the six tactics, five tactics. The targets are mostly foot slugging veterans. They are a perfect target for skirmishes. Because if you can pin that veteran unit down, pin that Gurkha unit down, they are not going to hurt you. And they are going to waste turns trying to get the pins away again. Um, Inexperienced hordes, unless they're Japanese and have Banzai, inexperienced hordes are really good targets for this. Because you can either force them to go down, meaning they, they waste a turn, or you can deliver one or two pins, even one or two casualties as well. And then they won't move because inexperienced really suffers once they have two pins. And open top vehicles are also a perfect target for this. Um, all the enemy's armored cars that are open topped, perfect target for this pin machine um, um, tactic. So those are the targets that you really want to skirmish. Um, you don't want your skirmishes to go and, and hunt small teams or snipers or um, enemy lieutenants, not what they're there for. These are the best targets for you. Now we come to the difficult question. Does it really work? 
Uh, it does work, um, but I don't think it works on its own. I don't think you can build an, uh, a, a complete skirmish army and do well at tournaments. You're going to need to have different tools in your box than that. But as an element to a mixed bag platoon, then it really works. Uh, yes, it, it can work. Um, there are other elements that, that could do the same, and there are other units that could do the same for you. Um, so sometimes it might not be the most optimal choice to go skirmish infantry. Um, but in low point games, I think it really does work. In low point games, like 500 points, 700 points, skirmishes are really beneficial um, because they can do a lot of different stuff and you can move out a bit and you can shoot at range. And so you have a lot of different capabilities in your skirmish units. Um, competitively, not so much. Um, we did see some skirmish units at the, the WTC. We did see some skirmish units at Nationals, but... They're not what's really winning games. Um, so I think the meta has moved maybe a little bit away from skirmishing, which is, of course, a pity. But I, I think that's just the, the way the, the game is read right now by competitive players. Um, so I'll still question whether or not it's, it's it really works, but I think it, it can work. Um, the main issue that I have with it is that there are other units that... that do skirmishing better. Um, so if we just look at the capability of being a pin machine, uh, having that last turn rush, um, all of that, all the tactics that I just listed up in my tactics section, um, and all the targets, there are other units that are better suited to go after those targets and to deliver those pins. So, and they, some of them are, are even cheaper. So early war motorcycles with machine gun sidecars, perfect. 35 points for a light machine gun, and it's got recce, and it's a vehicle. Um, it, yes, it's open-topped, and it can even dive because it's soft-skinned, but you got recce. If anything's dangerous, you just recce away. Otherwise, you shoot, and they do exactly the same as a skirmish unit. And a skirmish unit of regulars, by the way, will cost you 50 points. Um, they all have 28 uh, inches range. And they'll cost you 50 points. This early war motorcycle will cost you 35 points. Yes, it only has four shots, but it's got better range and it's got Reiki. Much, much better. Much better than the infantry. Um, darker stewards, really side tanks, Panzer 3s, all the darker tanks, they also do it better um, because they are also a real threat to infantry units. So you can, it's way more easy to force units to go down. Uh, force your targets to go down and they've got anti-tank capability and they can split fire so you can deliver pins to multiple units at the same time just way better way more useful um yes they are more expensive than single unit of infantry but when you compare them with what they can deliver and at the same time they're armored there's just no comparison i think uh, they, they just blow infantry out the water and both in in a competition with infantry for the skirmish capability but also as because they're signed right to murder infantry um so and there are some uh, armored cars where you can also do split fire that is a really beneficial rule um split fire means that you can double pin yourself um right so you don't have to have two units to to deliver, deliver double pins you can actually with two of your own units you can deliver four pins to enemy units really good for pin machines if we're looking at units that does this extremely well go check out the um, forward deploying soviet scouts they're really good skirmishes and they they can do other stuff as well um, and they're small teams, and they're veterans, and, and they can go and hunt because you can put them with SMGs, and they're already deployed in, in the center. And they can go and hunt enemy small teams and forward deployers. Perfect. Perfect unit. They're not a perfect skirmish unit, but they are a perfect unit that has many of the same capabilities and use many of the same tactics and go after many of the same targets, but even a few more. Um, FSSF teams. 
are actually really good um, and they are actually in the infantry selection uh, for for Americans so so they are possibly the best skirmishes I know of and they are that because they are small teams they've got the rifles yes there are only two riflemen because they're small teams right so you might miss sometimes but you've got an escape move for an infantry unit that is extremely useful and for a small team they're really hard to kill um, Two years back, when I became the Danish national champion, my uh, final game was, so the finale, was against Anas, my, um, he's basically my my evil uh, twin. He's, he's, he's one player whom I rarely win against. And he plays Germans. I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I, I just, he's, he's my nemesis. He, he, he wins again and again. Anyways, he was playing FSS, um, and and we were playing kill points, and I should be able to just assault and kill him, and I couldn't. He just moved away, and he pinned me out. It was horrible. It was a horrible game. I I, I end up drawing with me in the lead, but but God damn it, it was difficult killing those guys. So they are way more useful because they're way more survivable than your average regular skirmishes. Um, also, check out Mongolian Cavalry. Mongolian Cavalry are skirmishes on horseback. Really good, really good skirmishes. So there are a lot of other units that have different capabilities and slightly different builds and do slightly different things as well. Because the Mongolians, are, of course, at the same they, same time, they do all the cavalry stuff. So go and watch my video on cavalry tactics. But they're also skirmishes because they can shoot rifles from horseback. Um, so, yeah, I think um, skirmishing is fun, it's good, it's good for your skill, uh, so it's good training, but I don't think that skirmish infantry is the way to go most of the time. So that was it. That was my rookie tutorial for skirmishing. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you got something out from it. Um, got something out from it, I can't say that. Got uh, Learned something from it. Um, so yeah, see you in the next video. Cheers.